Hello, my name is Alex, and this video is going to be going over MongoDB, how to set it up, how to use the basic CRUD operators like write, read, update, and delete, as well as going into some of Brad Traversy's uh, cheat sheet document tips, um, some really useful commands um, that people use every day and that should be helpful while you're developing with MongoDB. First thing you want to do is you want to go to um, MongoDB. So let's see. There we go. So once you get here, do start for free, right? Or actually, do I even need to do that? I don't even think I need to do that. Uh, let's see. Software, free and open document database community server. Okay, I'm gonna go here. And then you're going to like one thing you can do is you can download it. And this is how they explained it. But really, the best way to do it is to do it, um, you know, using homebrew, if you have a Mac, like it was so easy to do. And I'm going to do that instead. So let me we find out here installation okay so I went under documentation I guess you can get to it from docs.manualdb.com slash manual go on server we'll go under installation and we're gonna install the install mongodb community edition and then I'm installing on Mac OS OS right and uh, so it's saying let's see here we go. To install the MongoDB Community Edition using Homebrew, this is what you run. So, like, I'll go through this. I've already done this, so it's just gonna, it's gonna be fine. But you know, copy it, and you just want to paste it into your terminal, and let it run. They'll probably end up saying that I already have things done, and it'll just finish quickly which is cool but let that run there you go it's already done okay so then you're gonna install the actual MongoDB version uh, and then you so you'll run this command so I'll copy paste it just directly in and it's saying you already have it to reinstall it do something else I don't want to reinstall it but you know this is what you're doing then after this what was recommended and I really like this is to run it as a service that way you can access it anywhere you can just like pull up a terminal and and just run it and the way to do that is like to here we go let's see to run as a service this is what you do you copy this paste it in and let it run so I already did this I don't need to stop doing it but let's see is there any problem with me doing it again I think it's already like it's already started so I already have it there it's already working but that's really it like those three things once you install those now I'm in a place where if I once I open up a terminal just exactly how it is if I just type in Mongo like I'm in I now can run some basic commands and I'll go over them with you right now but just to, to even see it be like show DBs and I can see that I have like databases here um, like the Acme one was one that I had created last night um, but even if I wanted to make a new one I can say like use test and it says switch to DB test and now I'm in a new database called test um, because there's nothing in it um, if I went and did show DBs again it doesn't show up I don't have any collections or documents inside of it but that's how easy it is to get it going and like working on your um, like on your local machine so and then to exit out right you just do exit and it'll say bye to you really sweet so after this the basic setup is done like there really isn't anything beyond that that you need to do to get it going okay 
Um, and, and again, this is a local local running uh, instance of MongoDB. Um, and you can do it on cloud too. I'm gonna just focus on this right now because it really it's really cool to interact with. Let's see if I can make this a little bigger. Okay. So the next thing I wanna do is just kind of go over, now that I have MongoDB, setting up the collections and documents inside. So MongoDB works like where you have your database and it's like what I was showing there. You have a name, like I can make test database. Um, and then inside a test you have collections and the collections work kind of like tables would work in other databases. Um, they're little groupings of, of, uh, of information and what you put within those tables or within those collections are called documents. The documents are written out in like JSON and they hold the information that you want to store and retrieve and do stuff with. Um, so an example, like let's go, I want to use a lot of this stuff here so that you can be comfortable, you know, writing things out. Like there's, uh, let's see, is there like a MongoDB? Let's just do this. Like uh, collections. I don't know. Let's see. Let's go to collection area, collection methods. Actually, I'm going to go to the shell method. So I'm going from like the basic stuff. And let's see if we can find something where we need to create, like I know how to create a database. We need to create a collection. So let's see if we can find something that says like create a collection. Uh, let's see, reading, reading, reading. Okay, so this will create a new document in a collection. That will be useful. Let's see, I'm just going to do create, kind of go through these. There we go. Create new collection or view. So I need one of these. So let's open it up. Let's see what it needs itself. So pretty basic. It looks like if I just do db.createCollection and then give it a name, I'll get a name. I'll get a collection started. So let's start that. So uh, let me bring up Mongo. So I'm in to show my databases. And then I'm going to make that new one test. So I'm in test right now. So then I'm going to go db dot create collection. And in there, I'm going to give it a name and say collection one. It said, okay. So if I say show DBs, now that I have a collection, you see that it's showing up as an active DB. So now I know that it wrote in there. And um, now let's see, what else do I want to do? If I want to add something, like, can I like just see my DBs? or my collections inside of this DB. Let's see. So if I go here, I want to go back and collection. Let's see, show. Is there any show collection thing? go here to it's our collection method so let me see if I find can I find something that says like show collection or something like that I can do a count okay so count will give me some information let's see that so I'm inside of I'm already in my database test but if I do db.collection.count, I should get one. Wait, why is that? Let's see. 
If I'm getting zero, why is that? What does this do? Maybe I just don't know what it does. Okay, so there you go. It returns the amount of documents inside of that collection. Since I don't have any documents, it would be zero. That would actually make sense. Okay, so that's working as, as expected. But I want to find something that shows me how many collections or lists out the names of the collections that I have. So let's see. If I go here, I'm going to look for something. Uh, I feel like it would be a collection method, right? It'd be something about collections. So let me read through these. Let's see. No, no, maybe it's a shell method. Maybe it's like, it's more of a root method that I can use like, let's see, let's see. I know there's one. I used it not too long ago. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Get collection list all the views and database like these are the things that are going to work so let's see if we can do get collections collection names so i want to find that one collection one that i made so let's see like db dot get collection names let's try that one boom okay so there we go so if i create collections i can be able to find them out and find out what the names of them are directly from the command line interface using the method dot get collection names. There was another one. Let's just see what it it comes out with. Dot, let's see get collection infos. Okay, so it gave me the collection name, and it told me it it is a collection, and it's giving me information about it. So this is more like the nitty gritty stuff. When I, I just really wanted the name, so that worked for, that worked fine for me. So that's cool. Okay. So, so now that I have it there, let's let's go a little bit deeper. Now that I I can create a collection, I want to be able to add what's called a document. It's like it's the information that you store in the collection. So if I had a table of let's say users or a collection of users. These would be the individual users in them are the documents. Okay, so let's uh, let's keep going on with this collection one. And what I'll do is I'll even can I make let me go back here. I'm going to make one that's called users just to kind of play with it. So I went back to that original method dot create collection and I'm going to add in a different name instead of collection one. I'm going to add in users. And I'm going to hit OK. And then now, if I do collection names, I should have two. There you go. Collection one, uses one. I was just going up on my D-pad to use my previously used commands. So it's a really cool little feature. You can put up and go back down to you know, what I'm doing. I'm just hitting the up arrow and the down arrow on my keyboard. So within users, what I want to do is I want to add a document. And I just want to put in a name. So uh, I want a key value pair because that's how these documents are laid out they're laid out in key value pairs and we can see that a little bit more if I go to mongodb crud operations you're gonna see a really good breakdown of the things you can do so we're gonna be using the create operation right because I want to create a new document create or insert operations add a new document to a collection that's what I want to do so Coming back in here, the way that it works is you will start with DB and then your uh, collection. And then this is the operation, the method 
that uses is method or function or I, I, I honestly still am learning all the differences of those things but you have your database collections and then the thing you do and this is what's different whether I want to write something I want to read something like get something back I want to update something or I want to delete something right these are the things that you use so let's let's follow that path so I know that mine is also users so I can it's gonna look very similar but you put whatever name you put of your collection like if I wanted to put it to the other collection I'd put collection one all right you get me okay so I'm gonna do users dot and then I'm gonna do insert one okay and then from here it, it looks like if I have these I have a parentheses and then curly braces so I need to do that so if I do parentheses and then inside I'm gonna do curly braces so in here what I wanted to do is I didn't want to add all this stuff but might as well let's just add I'm gonna add in exactly the same I'll make it look the same so I put in name there's a semicolon and then sue right comma next thing age 26 comma and status we're gonna mark it pending so that's all it says that I need to do so let's just try it I'm gonna hit enter and let's see what it says it said okay acknowledge true it inserted a new object ID so this is showing me that it was successful now how do I see what's inside of there I would need to do what's called a read operation so I can be able to go to the same thing and, and say DB and I'm just following this right here right I'm just gonna follow this read operation say DB dot users dot bind and and even if I just wanted to see like here it's actually it's looking to find a specific one so this is like filters but if I just want to find everything I'll do dot find and then just parentheses and you see it brings up that information now one of the cool things about Mongo one of these commands here is that you can actually make this look a lot better so if I do the up arrow to get back to my previous command but I'm gonna add on dot pretty to the end of it and look look at the difference so on the first one it was all in one line right here all in one line but look at how it it organized it now it makes it much much uh, easier to read um, and now I can see what this document remember this is a document inside of a collection inside of my database this document has the values that I initially put in it put the name sue age 26 status pending and then it added in this extra thing an ID up on top um, every time that you write something to the database it's gonna add on this ID um, and it's a way of keeping track uh, within it within itself so that you can use it to call back things so like let's say another example right I want to make another and and here this is another cool thing that you can do just a uh, side note let's see if I bring up like a code editor that makes it a little bit simpler close that out so I bring up like an empty file uh, I'm, I use this this is something that I saw Brad Traversy do and, and it, it really made sense because it's much easier to edit here than it is to edit here but if I recreated that same one so dot DB dot users dot let's see how did I do it it was this one here okay users dot insert one and I did parentheses and then I did curly bracket things and now I list out the stuff so I wanna I wanna add in another user I'm gonna add in my name and let's see, see how I can I can write it out a lot easier here uh, age and let's see I'm 34 years old and status I don't know pending let's just do pending again cool and this time what I want to do is I want to add in I'm gonna add in my own ID number 
one, two, three, four, five. So I can take this, copy it, right click, copy it, come back to the command line, paste it, just hit enter. And I'll say, cool, you did it. So now let's let's look. I should have, if I did that db dot uh, users dot find dot pretty. I should get two documents, one that has Alex and one that has Sue. Let's see what I get. Look at that. Now you see how I added in an extra field into this one and I didn't have it in the other one. That's the one benefit of MongoDB is you can add in, you don't have to define what goes into, into your, uh, your doc, your collection um, like the formatting uh, per document. You can make them kind of unique, which, which makes it really flexible. I can even go back in and add in this ID field. You know, if like later we're like, let's say if you decide you wanted to add a new field on entries, you could go back in and update the other ones to include them, or you don't even have to have them. It's not even necessary. It's, this is something that's different from other databases. But you can see that all the same information now is, is showing. And, and now I can do things that I couldn't before, right? When I only had one document in here, I couldn't do things like setting a query filter because there is technically only one, right? But now that I have two different names, two different documents, I want to try out one of these uh, read operations where I filter and I find, I just want to find the uh, Alex user. So how would I do that? So let me take this away. And I'm going to db.users.find because I know that that's the read beginning point. And then it's saying, I want to query some of this information. So what this is, is a greater than uh, like operator or, you know, command. So it's saying the age is greater than 18. Um, and projection, what's projection? Name one, address one. Not 100% sure what that means, but let's look at this. If I did db.users.find and I did uh, curly braces, open them up, I only need to tell it what I want to find it based off of. So if I say I want the name to be Alex, and then actually I'm going to add dot pretty to it. Why not? Make it look nicer. This should work. And there you go. So of the two documents that I had in there, the one that, that I pulled up was based off of if it had the name Alex. Now, one thing that's kind of cool is if I were to even do, let's see if I did uh, A, because it's not technically the name. Let's see what it does. I don't know. It couldn't find anything because there wasn't a name that said Alex. It needed to be an exact match. Now, there are ways to do it in here where you can do kind of like, as long as it has it listed in there, like you could do things like that. Um, but I'll let you explore and find that out. So we've done something, we've done a write, we've done a read, right? So the, the write is db dot uh, users, the collection name uh, dot insert one you can also just do insert right but insert one and then we did a read operation so db.users.find I can find all of the things I have I can add dot pretty to it I can see them nicer let's do an update let's follow along the same way we're going to be doing db dot our collection name which is users and dot update and there's different ones you can use. Um, even you can use one that just calls dot update, but we'll follow it along here with dot update. Uh, let's see. So writing it out db dot users dot update. And I know I have parentheses and I know that the first thing that it does is it takes up a filter to find out which one you want to update and then what you want to update. So the first one put some curly brackets is going to be uh, I want it to find out mine, which is name, 
Alex. Okay? And then on the second one, let's see. It's showing here to have a set, like it's using this this other one here. So we're gonna do that. So let's put these in here. And I'm gonna put money sign set on and then a new one just like it has it here and then the thing that I want to set age I want to change it from 34 to 35 so that should be enough there we go and you see how it has right result it said that it found it matched the one so it found my Alex one um, and it modified that field. It didn't add in anything. It modified the original one. So what I should see when I do db.users.find.pretty is I should see two documents, one Sue, one Alex, and my Alex one should have a new age value in the key value pair of age from 34 to 35. And that's what I see. So I see two documents one Sue, one Alex. It found the Alex one and it updated the age, the key value pair age and 35 from 34 to 35. So successfully done an update on here. Let's do the last one here with uh, a delete and we go through the full CRUD uh, operators. So for delete, let's say I want to delete uh, a status, right? I want to take out just like they're doing. I want to uh, delete the status of, of um, let's do it from both of them. Can we do both? Delete many. Okay, yeah, let's, let's try a, a multiple one. So we're going to delete anything that has the status. It's a filter. So db. the user collection, delete many, anything that has the filter where status is set to, and we're going to put it instead of reject, because we don't have any that say reject, we're going to do pending. So what it should do is it should delete out on both of these documents. Let's see how it plays out. So uh, let's go back here and I'm going to use this db.users.delete many. And it looks like parentheses, right? It has like pair parentheses and then curly braces. So we're going to do parentheses and then curly braces. And then inside, let's set the uh, status anything that says pending right okay and let's see what happens so it did it acknowledged that it worked it was true and the delete count was two it found two now what do you think is going to happen like when we do db.users.find Do you think that it's going to delete just that field or the whole document based off of that field? Let's see. Look at that. So it deleted everything. This is a very powerful operator. So it deleted all of that information, the name, the age, the ID. And now that collection of users is empty. So if I wanted to go back in and make something, Let's do, let's do a very quick one. I'll go through the whole setup one more time. So um, if I did db.users.insert uh, and I want to insert an, with a name of Alex. So now I have something in there. And I can verify that by going db.users.find. So this is a read. So I did a create. I'm going down this list, right? Did a uh, create. Now I'm going to do a read. I can see that I have that user with the name Alex. Now I want to update. So I want to update from the name from Alex to uh, Alex Vela. Let's put my full name on there. So I do db.users.find or update and I want to first 
find the one that I want to update. There's only one, but you know, for sake of practice, match it here. Whoops. Oh, oh it's because let me do it here. db.users.update The first one I want to find anything with the name Alex, which is, there should only be one. And then I want to do a set. And then here I want to update the thing I want to update. So I want to update from the name from Alex to Alex Bella. And that should be it. So it with the result it says that it found it and it modified that record. So let me verify again db dot collection users dot find dot pretty. And now the name is Alex Fella. So now if I wanted to delete this user, I can say db dot users dot delete Let's see and I could do many but uh, you can do it other ways too you see delete one there's other options so uh, within here I'm setting my filter to say I want anything that has the name Alex Bella and it acknowledged it, it found it, it, it completed and deleted one, which means that if I do db.users.find, I get nothing back. So we've gone through some of the basic things that you can do. Um, another really cool thing that um, I found really helpful was this uh, cheat sheet that Brad Traversy made that goes over all of like some really good like I used a lot of these of um, commands um, while you're learning so you can from showing that you have DBs you can show the current database like let's go through some of these and I'm just going to uh, make another document in here real quick just so that I have something to practice with so cool so here let's just go through them so show DBs right lets me see all my databases show the current database so I can know which one I'm on so it shows me tests which is I'm on I can create or switch to another database so if you don't have a database named whatever you put after use um, it will create one for you but let's say I have one that says Acme so if I went to here now I'm on this one I can go back and now I'm on this one um, drop database so that will let you like remove like completely drop out a database like so if I made uh, test 2 now I'm on that one I can say DB dot drop database and then that one's gone now There you go. It's, it's strange it still showed the name, but I know it's gone because of that drop uh, database. Uh, collection, or maybe you have to actually name it. Let me see. Use that test two. Let's try drop. I guess it is just as simple as this. Okay. Uh, show collections. So if I wanted to go into, I know that in my test one, I have collections. So I could say like show. Look at that. That's even easier than the one that we did before, right? 
if I wanted to create a new collection in there, right? We have a create collection. So I'll do db dot create collection, and then I'll just make one just like he has. Posts. So then I go to show collections, and now I have posts in there. Cool, right? Now another one. If I wanted to insert information, like here, here I'm just going to copy this because. I just made a post collection and I want to add insert in this document into that post. Copy it and it said it did it. So if I did db.post.find.pretty, I should see that one in there now. Pretty cool. Insert multiple rows. So this is a, a single row entry. And I'm using the single insert operate like uh, method here. But there's another one. If you want to add in a bunch of stuff at the same time, you can do insert many. So let me just copy this one over. And again, because I have that post collection, I can just put it directly in. And now if I do db dot post dot find dot pretty, I'm gonna see all of that stuff. Look at that. The three that I just added and that first one that I added up here. So see some other ones, so it's db.posts.find, that's what I've been doing, so it'll get me all the rows. And if I do the dot pretty, it makes it pretty like I just saw here. Now if I wanna find something really specific, like you can see how some of these have a categories that are different. So if I wanted to find one based off of one of those categories, I could use something like this where it's a find with a filter saying I want anything with category news and I'm gonna do dot pretty on it just because it always looks nicer and you see how it brought up the first one because it had uh, category news on both of these so the first one had it the second one had it the other ones didn't have it so it didn't bring it up uh, another thing you can do is you can sort these by the title you see how the titles on here like if I did db dot uh, post dot find dot pretty each title here I got one two three four I can use those as a sorting option so he gave he gives two awesome uh, ascending and descending ones I really like so we'll just follow them db dot post dot find dot sort you just kind of tack them on just like you would do in JavaScript. Title. And the one and negative one is what you use to make it ascending or descending order. So well, this one will be ascending. And then we'll do pretty. And you see there after that one. Post four. Post one. Post three. Post two. It's using them alphabetically. So F O T, right? And if I did the exact same thing, but put a negative here, I would get the opposite: post two, post three, post one, post four. Uh, let's see. I can count the rows. Another one. So db dot posts dot find dot count. Four. That means I have four rows um, inside of like inside of this uh, uh, collection in my post collection. Rows of documents. Making sure I'm using the. I believe I'm using all the the words correctly here. Um, I can limit. So if I did, I only wanted to find. Uh, you know how many. Instead of getting all four, I want to only get like the like two, like the the two most recent or two, you know, whatever. Um, I can I can do that by doing something like here, where it's saying like find. So it's going in from the database to the collection, finding all of them, limiting it by two, and then making it pretty. So let's do that one. D dot post dot find all of them, limit by two and then make it pretty when you show it to me. So 
we grabbed the top two and made it pretty. And you see how you can keep chaining stuff over it. So here, just to read it, right, from the database, my collections, find everything, limit it by two, and then only show me, and then sort it in an ascending order with that positive one, and then make it pretty. So I'm just going to copy this one. There you go. For one, making it pretty, two. Uh, for each, this is a really cool one um, that lets you kind of print out stuff here. So I'm just going to copy it and kind of just see how it works. But see what it does is it first goes to the collection. I'll bring this up so you see it too. Collection, find everything. And then it says for each, and this is where it's gonna go through like a for loop. So it's like for each of the items, like it's gonna call this function on the document. This is a document. I want you to print blog post, little space. So this is gonna be just a string plus whatever the doc dot title is. So it's gonna go through each one of these documents and find the title and concatenate that, right? That's the right word concatenate that with blog post so that it would say the first one would be uh, blog post post one and then blog post post two and blog post three and that's what we see here see it printed out this way so this is a really easy way to generate this like think about how you could be generating this on a site you can make this into uh, like if these got listed out into um, HTML tags then that can be displayed you know directly into um, onto the DOM. Another one here, uh, find one row. So we knew that there were multiple categories of news. You say find one, it will find the first one that it finds. You can also do this with the dot limit, you know, like uh, this limit to one, you know, is the same as the find one. Um, find specified fields. So let's see this one. So this one looks like it's finding, the first one is a filter. So in post one, find specific fields. Let's see. So in post one, there is no author, but it's finding, it looks like for the first one, I want you to print just the title and the author, but there wasn't an author, so it just printed the title. So that's what that one does. Update row. So in update row, let's see first what it looks like. So db dot post dot find dot pretty. So here, let's figure out what this would do. So we're it's going to look for post number two. So in post number two, it wants to change the body and the date. So it's going to change the body from body of post two to a new body for post two. And looks like maybe even the title, but the title is the same. So um, cool. Let's try it. So we run that one. It says that it matched one and it modified one. So let's see what it did. Post two, new body for post two. Ah, you see that too. What it did was it made this replace whatever was in there before because we had a category field and it removed it you see that like if I go back here to post two we had a category technology field and now that because we didn't include it in this update now that's gone the other ones still have it that one's gone so we could use this next one here to update it to bring it back so this is 
kind of the difference of if it's not there, the dot the money sign set. If it's not there, make a new one. So I come in here. It says it matched it. It modified it. Let's see what it finds. If I go to post two, now I have a category of technology again, just like before. But I also have the uh, oh no, because it, it did it did category and body, so it changed both of these fields for me. But it kept the uh, the date that I had set in the previous one. So see, it's like you're updating. You can update things and replace them, or you can update things um, and update them. And if they're not there, add them. So really cool little uh, operators here that you should uh, get familiar with. But you see, like look at all these. There's so many great ones in here, and like you know, it's the sub documents. This is a really cool one. It's like adding in. Because uh, a key value pair is the simplest form of stuff in here, right? I have a key and a value. Body, body of post three. But you can also store in arrays like within there too. So like here, if I wanted for post one, I want to add in a comment section, comment uh, row. And inside, I want there to be an array of objects. So if I have that here. Now, look at this. Post one, that's what it did it to, has a comments section, which has an array of two objects. And inside of those objects, it has a body, key value pairs of body, comment one, user, and date for both of them. So for me, that's everything that I wanted to kind of talk about. Um, I hope that this was useful and it gave, you know, some insight you know for the anybody that wants to watch me kind of go through this and and explain a little bit about how mongo works um i i'm really happy that uh it, it would it would bring you any value um so please let me know if you like this if you want some other stuff like this like just kind of me talking about what i learned and then showing examples and trying to explain it um thank you brad traversy for doing this and like first showing that video and going over this with me so I can understand it and then trying to explain it a little differently to other people. Um, so I'll include um, all the stuff I talked about in the link and, um, and, that, and yeah, I hope you liked it. Take care. I really hope you liked my video. Um, if you have any uh, comments on it, please leave it below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have any recommendations on other things, like if you like this format or you want to see other videos like that, let me know. Um, reach out to me or post it up on there. Um, this stuff really helps me learn. So if it helps you learn in any way, let's learn together.